thank you ma'am for making us understand what having a better understanding about what is going on in the heart as each heart like it generates the heartbeat now next i would call upon the next speaker of the session dr gyan ranjan nayak sir sir has done his mbbs in sed medical college odisha md general medicine dm cardiology post doctor fellow in interventional cardiology from king george medical university sir is mbbs gold medalist mb md gold medalist so was first runner up in cardicon which was held in 2020 and won second prize in ishbt state level hematology quiz competition presently sir is working as a junior consultant in sri satyasai institute of higher medical sciences bangalore i would welcome you sir so going to cover a huge topic that is ecg in acute coronary syndrome so acute coronary syndrome comprises of three things st elevation mi non st elevation mi and unstable angina okay so so first we should know the pathophysiology of mi so there is the most dangerous or the central zone is the necrotic zone or the infarct zone okay it is already dead so how do you realize that in ecg how do you diagnose that in ecg there is a development of the q waves there is loss of r wave height and notching in the qrs complex and peripheral peripheral area surrounding the necrotic zone is the injury area which is actually most important for cardiologist and you people because you have to salvage that area because you don't do anything the area again goes necrotic that means it is not salvageable so how do you how do you like uh, see in the ecg and know that this is the area of injury there would be tall broad based t waves there would be st segment elevation and tall r waves and then there is the peripheral most peripheral zone is the ischemic zone which is the area at risk and it is actually the maximum volume of the myocardial tissue because if you have to deal with because in near future it can go into injury and necrosis so you regularly do tmts and you know that st depressions and t inversions are the sign of ischemia so i will first talk about st elevation mi so so what do you see in the st elevation mi you see there is st segment elevation in the over the area of damage and there should be reciprocal st depression you should remember this thing these things go in hand in hand okay and you have to see for any t inversions and pathological q waves so what is the definition how much you should say that the uh, my st segment is elevated so that i can stamp it as st elevation mi so according to the acc guidelines so 1 mm elevation in all leads except v2 v3 okay so 1 mm elevation in all leads except v2 v3 so v2 v3 has a uh, sex and an age preponderance okay so for v2 there is at least 2 mm elevation in a male with age more than 40 years if the age is less than 40 it is 2.5 okay and in females irrespective of age it is more than 1.5 so you are clear and you should also know that if we are looking at the posterior leads and the rv leads the cutoff is even lower it is 0.5 mm so 1 mm standard 2 mm in v2 v3 1.5 in females and 0.5 if you are doing the posterior leads or the rv leads okay so the coming to the evolution which is the most important thing in st elevation mi you should you should know that the st elevation mi goes through a characteristic four phase of evolution so what is that first is the hyper acute phase which usually comes within minutes to hours the patient will come within a few minutes or one hour or two hours and what do you see in that so it is characteristic uh, you can see over here there is the first thing will be the hyper acute t waves okay so there will be tall tented broad based t waves so how how what is the cut off for this tall t waves it is usually 5 mm in the limb leads and 10 mm in the uh, chest leads okay uh, precordial leads and or it can be more than 50% of the qrs height okay 
so tall tented t waves which is broad based okay so uh, and there could be initially st elevation initially it could be convex upward but uh, as we know as the phase evolves the st elevation will become convex upwards okay so in the hyper acute phase there is tall peaked white t waves with some amount of st elevation and increased amplitude of r waves but as we gradually moves from hours like the the patient is coming after 4 hours 6 hours 10 hours okay so there is the evolved phase of the mi so how can we diagnose what is the evolved phase you can see over here so there is the first there will be formation of the q waves okay so q waves as i already told is the sign of necrosis the uh, some area has already started dying okay so q waves formation of the pathological q waves again there is the definition to everything okay what is the definition of pathological q waves i will uh, tell you but you you have to see see the st elevation again increases first it was concave upwards then it will become convex upwards okay and the st segment will gradually so as the time passes hours to days okay so then it will come uh, then it will become stabilized okay so what is stabilized phase or the stable chronic phase it is then the q waves it will stay the q wave stays forever okay and the st will decrease to height okay the st will decrease there is the t inversion and once you can see over here that the t is inverted the st is coming to baseline and once uh, there is uh, uh this uh, uh, chronic stable phase so you can see that the st returns to the baseline okay so evolved phase the st was elevation was there convexity upwards there is pers then after in the, uh, coming to the chronic stable phase the st returns to baseline here it was t inversion and here the t becomes again upright okay so once the chronic stable phase which occurs like after some uh days like 2 to 3 days or 4 to 5 days after that yeah, the patient comes into chronic stable phase the t would be upright so you should see whether if there is uh, the st never returns to baseline even after some days like the patient is having anterior mi but the uh, the, the patient had a pain for two weeks back suppose but when you see the ecg you see there is st is still elevated then you should think of some things okay the most two common thing is ongoing injury mostly pericarditis and second thing is lv aneurysm these two you have to check okay you have to see the echo to find whether i have missed any aneurysm or not and if the t has not become positive in the chronic stable phase then might be you would be dealing with some ongoing ischemia okay and or there could be again that should be aneurysm okay and the qt interval which was uh, why which was prolonged now returns to the normalization of the qt interval so you are clear about all the phases of mi okay so uh, i would be telling about what is the pathological q wave so what is the pathological q wave the definition of pathological q wave so so uh, any q wave which is more than 20 in all limb leads more than 30 in all precordial leads and more than 40 in limb 3 hard limb usually there is some q waves but when you say it as pathological if it exceeds 40 ideally it is 20 for limb lead 30 for precordial leads so next next important after we see the progression of the mi then the most important thing okay this table is one of the most important table you will find in uh, uh, all the ecg books uh, i have taken it from uh, samrat and chaus okay so what is uh, the site of the infarct first you should know the there are three vessels so which can if the lad is occluded we will be dealing with anterior wall mi and if the circumflex or rc is infarcted then we will be dealing with inferior wall mi and there could be modification in the lateral lateral wall posterior wall and rv wall so i will be talking about how you will diagnose seeing the ecg which territory is involved so coming to the anterior wall mi so and we know that lad gives first septal branch and the diagonal branch whether the occlusion is proximal to s1 and distal to d1 okay that also comes under proximal led but whether it is coming proximal to s1 and distal to d1 
or whether it is coming proximal to D1 and sparing the septal, or it is including both the S S1 and D1. And uh, depending upon that, your prognosis will depend and also the ECG changes. You can see the ECG and tell which territory is involved. So if uh, I will first, uh, so you should be knowing this. I am not going into detail. So septal leads are the V1 to V2. The anterior leads are the V2 to V4 and the lateral are V5, V6 and 1 and AVL. Okay. So if there is anter, if there is anteroseptal MI, then probably you are seeing the elevation from V1 to V4 with some other features, which I will tell. If there is anterolateral MI, then there is elevation in V2 to V6 because V5 and V6 are lateral leads and also there would be elevation in 1 and AVL. And if there is extensive anterior, like that is it is osteal LAD involving both S1 and D1, proximal to S1 and D1, there would be elevation in all leads, V1 to V6 with 1 and AVL. So, so let's come to the occlusion proximal to S1. What is the criteria? So there would be elevation in ST, uh, elevation in V1, in AVR, and there would be a complete right bundle branch block, which we call it as QRBB pattern. I will show it to you. And there would be, I told you, when there is elevation, always look for depression. Where will you look depress for depression? In the reciprocal leads, mostly inferior leads and the V5 and V6. So proximal to S1, there would be, you can see over here. So here there is an interval MI. You can see there is elevation in AVR, elevation in V1. Always see V1 if more than AVR, then it is probably LAD. But if the AVR elevation is more than V1, it is probably left main disease. Okay, I will tell you later. And you can see here anterior leads are involved. V1, V2, all our ST elevation is there. V4 is also involved and there is some depression in V5, V6 and the inferior leads. So the criteria, as I told, is the proximal LAD mostly it is proximal to S1. Okay, now coming to the second ECG, you can see uh, this is also the similar uh, kind of thing. Okay, uh, this is involving the V1 uh, that is uh, up to V5 and there is ST depression over do 3 AVL. But what happens? You see there is one and AVL elevation apart from that is uh, apart from uh, the uh, involving the S1, it is also involving the D1. Okay, so probably this MI is proximal to S1 and D1 both. So it is an antero extensive antero lateral MI. Okay. So and the second thing is the occlusion proximal to D1. Okay. But if it is sparing the S1, it is not involving the septal, only it is involving the diagonal proximal to diagonal. So there is involvement of high lateral. High lateral means you will you will be seeing ST elevation in one AVL and sometimes B5, B6. But always look for ST depressions in the inferior leads. Without it, you cannot only see the ST elevation. You have to see the reciprocal ST depressions always in ST elevation MI. The importance, I will tell it later. So, so you can see this this uh, patient. So there is no elevation in V1, no elevation in AVR, but you see there is elevation in V2, V3, V4, and you can see some elevation in 1 and AVL. So what do you think? What is the diagnosis? Where is the lesion? Can you, can anybody tell? Please, anybody? So it is mostly proximal to D1 and it is sparing the septal, okay? Because if septal would have been involved, there would be changes in V1 also. There could be RBB, uh, uh, in V1. Okay. So again, you can see this patient here. There is elevation in V2, V3, V4, V5, V6, and also there is elevation in 2, 3 ABF. So what is this? I told you to look for depression in inferior lead, but why this elevation in inferior lead? So I would go to my, uh, so you can see this slide, it is called as anteroapical or the distal LED involvement. So this, this is, this is after diagonal and septal, it is the distal LED and mostly the LED is type 3, which is wrap around LED. So whenever there is a distal LED occlusion, it will involve the inferior leads because the LED is going beyond the anterior apex and traversing into the inferior leads. So there could be changes in the inferior leads. So how do you know that which MI, whether it is inferior or whether it is anterior. So you look for QFs. If QFs is present in anterior leads, then probably it is anterior wall MI. Because in wraparound LED, there will be no formation of QF in inferior leads because that area is not under infarction. Okay. So you now know what are the uh, territories in anterior wall MI. Okay. 
so so can you tell me uh, what is this so you can see there is st elevation in avr v1 v2 v3 v4 v5 v6 and also in one hand avl so this is extensive anterolateral as i told you it is proximal to s1 d1 and has the gravest prognosis okay poor prognosis because most of the LA, uh, lv myocardium is involved okay Again, you can see over. This is a classical Tom stoning because more than 10 mm elevation in V2. You can see V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, V6. Everything is elevated except reciprocal depression in the inferior lids, and one AVL is also elevated. So again, it is proximal ostial LED or the proximal to S1 and D1. So now I will go into inferior wall MI. Okay, inferior wall MI. It is very tricky because. inferior wall mi is caused by the occlusion of the rc and circumflex by seeing scg can you diagnose whether the rc is involved or the circumflex is involved okay so i i will help you know that so again the diagnosis is you have to see for the st elevation in inferior lids 2 3 avf with reciprocal st depression either in the anterior lid or in the lateral lids okay and progressive development of qf that i told you so what are the features in inferior wall mi which will tell you that the patient is having a poor prognosis if with inferior wall mi there is in involvement of the rv mi which occurs in 40% and the posterior wall mi which occurs in 10 to 15% so if additional areas are involved again there is a poor prognosis and if there is significant av blocks or bradyarrhythmias then again there is a worse prognosis okay so the aha has given a class 2a indication whenever you do an, your routine 12 lead scg or in a inferior wall mi you should always involve the rv and posterior leads it is a class 2a indication because that will help you i will tell you why the posterior and rv leads are important because it increases the specificity of the uh, your uh, test so if you can see over here inferior wall first you should understand the anatomy so this is the right av group and this is the left av group the left av group the circumflex runs so it is it, it runs around this lid too and the right av group you can see the rca is running over here so you can see so what is opposite to this lid 3 is the lid avl and what is opposite to the lid 2 is the lid avr so in in rca because it is running in the right av group there would be elevation in lid 3 which is more than lid 2 okay so the corresponding st depression would be also more in avl in comparison to avr so two things three more than two elevation and depression in avl is more than avr that signifies that the you are probably dealing with the rc infarct and if the st elevation is more in two than three and the st depression in avr is more than st depression in avl then you are dealing with a circumflex there are other pointers which i will be discussing later this is the basic okay so here we uh, directly i am coming into the example you can see there is st elevation in the inferior lid 2 3 avf okay so you can see the three elevation is more than two elevation and you can also see the depression in avl is more than the depression in avr okay but what adds to the specificity is sometimes the elevation in 2 3 will be equal sometimes the depression in avl avr will be equal then always look at the right uh, lead one if the lead one is st depression is there then probably most frequently will be dealing with rca because lead one av uh, st depression very rarely seen in circumflex it would be either normal or it would be elevation in, in circumflex territory okay and second thing which i would be uh, pointing you out with elevation you have to see for the depressions so in rca the elevations in lead inferior leads is more than the depressions in the in the uh, your anterior precordial leads so you can see the elevation is more than the depressions which is other way around in a circumflex circumflex the elevation will not be that much but the depressions in the precordial leads will be more than the elevation there are some mathematical values but i am not going into detail i just want you to uh, understand the basic so that you can see the ecg and diagnose it okay so how can i know which is this so three more than two one and avl are dip, uh, depressed more than avr and the depression in v2 is less than the elevation v, uh, depression in this anterior leads is less than the elevation in the inferior leads now 
after diagnosing rca whether it is proximal rca or distal rca how can you tell that so you can you you have to look to the v1 lead okay so if there is elevation in v1 okay if the v1 is elevated or the v1 is normal but there is a significant depression in v2 then probably you are dealing with proximal rca but if there is depression in v1 to start with then probably it is a distal rca okay but this is not the most specific thing the most specific thing uh, is you have to do the rv leads okay which i will be talking so you are clear about this so you can again diagnose this patient you have to you see three is more than two there is depression in one and avl and uh, so it is mostly uh, uh, rca in fact okay so always in rca in fact you can uh, see whether v5 and v6 are elevated or not why first to diagnose it is rca then you see whether v5 v6 is elevated or not why so because they have told that if the rca is non dominant there would be no st elevation in v5 v6 but if there is a dominant rca there would be that could be st elevation in v5 v6 but it should not exceed 2 mm but if there is the involvement of a super dominant rca which is giving 5 plvs so the st elevation would be more than 2 mm in v5 v6 coming which if anybody ask you examiner ki what is the one lead which will tell you whether it is proximal rca distal rca or circumflex classic slide from harrison's in, internal uh, internal medicine so if the you have to do the v4 r okay rv4 okay so rv4 is the most important lead in inferior wall mi so if there is st elevation plus positive t wave then you are dealing with a proximal occlusion okay proximal rca if the, there is no st elevation but positive t wave then it is probably a distal rca but if there is st depression and negative t wave then obviously it is a circumflex and how quickly you have to do it it is within 10 hours after 10 to 12 hours this doesn't hold true because in the uh, rv4 lead it uh, changes after 10 hours okay all whatever it happened it happened in within 10 to 12 hours so i have already told you this i am not going into detail so uh, so you you have to tell me what is this artery okay you have to tell me so here you can see three more than two one avl depressed anybody can tell what is the artery involved i am not giving you answer one person should what is the correct answer you can raise, raise your hands we'll just yeah, yeah, like the mic anybody please they put a lot of effort for this all our boys okay if you want us to pick up then we do that yeah please very good rca sir okay why uh, because uh, three is having more uh, elevations yeah the it. reciprocal depression is in, in one, one and avl and avl depression is more than avl ha huh, yeah what is you can you tell me it is a proximal or distal i just now told you so you can you have to see the v1 i told you proximal. if there is st elevation in v1 again it is proximal, proximal. rca okay so if there would have been st depression then it would have been distal, distal rca okay and you can see st elevation over v6 so mostly it could be a dominant rca because it is not more than 2 mm so it not be a super dominant so, rca but it could dominant. be a dominant rca okay thanks yeah Then so again, this. Nobody else. Any anyone else? So don't please work. Don't waste time. We can uh, make it quicker. Okay. Can give it a try. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't see it. Please go for your ECG. Water. It's like spotters for you. So again. Three more than two. One ABL depressed. ABL depression is more than AVR. One is depressed means RCA. Prox are distal because V1 is dis uh, depressed, so mostly distal RCA. Okay. So this one, anybody can tell. Again, similar thing. RCA. Here there is classical Tom stoning. Okay. 10 mm elevation in three, uh, more than two, and also you see. there is 2 mm elevation in v6 
so might be we are dealing with a super dominant rca big rca okay now who will tell this one oh you have already read it okay fine so you can see that the st elevation is there in 2 and 3 okay the 2 is more than 3 but see the st depressions the st depressions are more than the st elevation and always see one and avl is there any depression in avl no and the depression in avr is more than avl depression rather there is an elevation in avl there is a coving in one and avl so definitely we are dealing with a circumflex not rca okay you are clear so why this is important because inferior wall mi is associated with av blocks because of ischemia of the av node or vagal stimulation i am not going into detail so uh, you can see over here i will be talking next about av block so you can see inferior wall mi with complete heart block okay so coming to the rv mi when how do you know that uh, one thing i already told you right proximal rc involving the right ventricle so you you have elevation in v1 what more okay but one why it is important because rv mi carries a poor prognosis if it is associated with inferior wall mi and the management is actually fluids okay so you have to see for uh, ecg changes to see so you can as i have already told you the most important lead is the rv4 so how do you do a rv4 you know that how do you do a rv4 so so it may be simpler to leave v1 and v2 in the usual position and just transfer v3 and v6 to the right side of the chest okay so the most important is the rv4 okay and it is obtained by placing the v4 electrode in the fifth right intercostal space in the mid clavicular line okay and see the sensitivity 88% and specificity of around 80% so high this lead okay so again you have to see this three more than two depression in one and avl and there is also an elevation in v1 and v2 so i will tell you why this is not an anterior wall mi anybody why this is not an anterior wall mi why it is an inferior wall mi nobody okay anyways so again you have to do the rv leads that will clear your, your doubts in anterior wall mi you don't get elevation in rv4 okay so you can see there is rv4 elevation okay so why this lead is important so there is involvement of the right ventricle again here also you see three more than two one avl depressed but avl is not elevated or depressed but there is a st depression in v2 i told you again this is one pointer for rv involvement and again once you do the uh, once you do uh, do the rv4 there is clear cut involvement of the rv uh, wall so third we go to the posterior wall mi so if whenever there is an inferior wall mi you always look is there is there posterior wall involved or not or is 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 it a true posterior mi which is very rare only 2 to 3% so why it is important because if in an inferior wall mi you have concomitant rv or posterior that carries again a poor prognosis but knowing this is very important because the patient will come with chest pain you do the all the 12 lead ecg there is no elevation in anywhere okay but there will be some depressions in the anterior lead and you have missed you didn't thrombolyze you didn't activate the cath lab and the patient will have uh, like uh, qfs forever so you have to see this so what is the criteria so pay attention over here okay so posterior wall mi is suggested by you have to see in the v1 to v3 lead okay v1 to v3 so there would be horizontal st depression of more than 1 to 2 mm there would be tall and broad r waves see this r wave r by s ratio is more than 1 okay r by s ratio is more than 1 and it is the r will be more than it will be wide r wave more than 30 millisecond and there is to, uh, there is upright t waves see st depression with upright t waves so what you do you just mirror image it you just flip your ecg you can see see this is v2 i have just flipped it so there is an st elevation could you see that so you could first you thought ki there is no st you didn't diagnose it because there is no st elevation in anterior leads so you didn't thrombolyze the patient okay but once you see this sign then you should be knowing 
कि नो वी वुड बी डूइंग विद अ ट्रू पोस्टीरियर वॉल एमआई व्हिच इज आल्सो एन इंडिकेशन फॉर इमीडिएट रिपरफ्यूजन ओके एंड अगेन व्हिच इज द मोस्ट इंपोर्टेंट लीड इज द वी7 टू वी9 सो हाउ डू यू डू दैट सो दिस इज यू यू प्लेस द थ्री लीड्स इन एट द बैक v7 एट द लेफ्ट पोस्टीरियर एक्सिलरी लाइन v8 एट द टिप ऑफ द लेफ्ट स्कैपुला एंड v9 एट द पारास्पाइनल एरिया ओके सो यू कैन सी ओवर हियर so so in an you you can see over here there is elevation in inferior leads and see over here you can see over here so there is a tall r wave r by s is more than 1 st depression and upright t waves so along with inferior wall there is involvement of the posterior wall okay you are clear so how can we diagnose that confirmatory so you do a posterior leads and you see there is elevation in v7 v8 and v9 How much elevation? What is the cutoff? What is the cutoff for posterior wall MI? More than 0.5. Yeah, not 1 mm. Okay. Again, again, you could see this. You just remember all these slides because it is very important. Again, here you can see there is. Uh, upper R R is tall. There is a steep depression and upright T waves. Okay. so you can see the posterior leads shows elevation in v7 v8 v9 okay so uh, coming to the lateral territory okay so what is which artery supplies the lateral territory it is mostly so which artery i'm not talking about ecg okay ecg you know that it is one avl and v5 v6 so artery is mostly the part of the lad and circumflex mostly the high diagonal high om or a ramus intermedius if it is actually there okay so it can be isolated lateral wall mi where there is elevation in one and avl along with v5 v6 or it can also involve the anterior leads where we tell it as anterolateral as i have already discussed and or it can involve the inferior wall also where we tell it as inferolateral okay so how to recognize as i already told you there would be st elevation in the lateral leads as you can see one avl is elevated and there would be reciprocal st depression in the inferior leads and no other leads are elevated so we are dealing with some high diagonal or high om here also you can see one avl coving there is no other lead elevation so could be a, a diagonal or an om and always when you see this always you have to do the posterior leads whether it is a posterior lateral mi or not okay so inferior inferior lateral inferior posterior lateral anterior lateral or pure lateral okay so here you can see this is an anterior lateral i have told it earlier also okay and inferior posterior lateral you can see two three avl elevated one avl and v5 v6 are elevated and there is a posterior involvement also see this you have you should not forget this everybody forgets about this this the stall rs pattern with upright t waves and st depression means there is posterior involvement okay so this is infero posterior lateral wall mi okay coming to the non st elevation mi so this is not that good uh, we cannot predict the culprit artery so uh, but the, uh, you should know the ecg changes most commonly there would be st depressions and t inversions okay but in non st elevation mi there are i would just like to point out three diagnoses which you should remember as a cct fellow because these are the patients which will have grave prognosis if you don't diagnose them early and they are called as st mi equivalents okay so what are this three this is the wellens syndrome okay it is a critical proximal lad so wellens syndrome is a pattern of deep inverted biphasic t waves or deep inversion you can see it is a symmetrical t wave inversion uh, yamini has already discussed you how to differentiate between ischemic t waves and uh, t inversion due to lvh if there is symmetric t wave inversions with qt prolongation it is mostly a sign of ischemia okay so deep t wave, t -wave inversion and this is uh, wellens type b which is the most common and it can also present as biphasic t wave here t upright again goes down okay so it is less common but both of them suggest that your lad is critical okay you cannot send the patient home you have to 
tell your cardiologist ki this ecg has come you have to come immediately okay so uh, as you can see uh, what is characteristic about this ecg ecg this ecg will be at rest when the patient is not having pain but once the patient have pain you will see that that inversion goes away and the t becomes upright it is called as pseudo normalization so that is the important of doing serial ecg in your acs okay once first the ecg was uh, like uh, uh, biphasic at resting time when there is no pain but once the patient have pain the t will be normal and upright okay and uh, then the second thing again d winter swabs or the widow maker uh, ecg so again it is critical lad okay so how do you diagnose it there will be tall prominent symmetrical t waves in the precordial leads up sloping st depression see st depression up sloping and see this t waves it is even larger than the r wave okay so this if this ecg comes to you in emergency you have to diagnose it see there is st depression up sloping st depre, uh, st depression and tall t waves and if you don't intervene then what will happen the patient will go into anterior wall mi okay if you would have intervened over here then the patient would have saved saved from a q wave okay and then last is the left left man stenosis or triple vessel disease pattern what is this pat pattern if one patient comes with chest pain and when you do ecg you see st depression in multiple leads in inferior in anterior but there is significant avr elevation okay avr and v1 elevation but as i told you avr more than v1 is left man okay and v1 more than avr is lad okay so you have to uh, know this so lastly i will take few minutes so you have to know about stemi equivalents these are not mis you don't thrombolyze this patient patient with fever chest pain and there is st elevation in all leads concave upwards not convex upwards there is no uh, territorial st depressions only st elevation in all leads and there is pr segment elevation and what you called as tp segment depression so tp segment depression is called down sloping depression is called as spodic sign okay you have to know this spodic sign and there is avr depress in avr there is st depression all lead st elevation is acute pericarditis okay you don't thrombolyze this patients and other there could be also st elevation in brugada there could be st elevation in uh, early repolarization syndrome where there is a classical notching and also in lbb just you have to know when a patient comes with acute chest pain and you have lbb pattern then you have to know this criteria garbosa criteria okay so in the lead where there is upright qrs if there is st elevation then that is called as concordance st elevation and that gets the maximum points five points if there is st depression in the leads where there is predominant qrs negative then it is called concordant st depression it get the second highest point that is three points and if there is discordant st elevation means in those leads where there is uh, uh, predominant negative uh, qrs complex there is st elevation more than 5 mm it gets the least point two points so if uh, there is more than equal to three points then it is an acute st elevation mi okay and as i have already told in uh, uh, in aneurysm mostly after two weeks even uh, persistent st elevation and t inversion always do the echo and see whether you have missed for lv aneurysm in the first place or not okay and lastly if there is a uh, old mi with lbb how do you know that that patient had mi in the past so there are two there are uh, two pointers one you see for the q waves so you can see the q waves in one and avl okay and you can see there is notching in the uh, up slope of this uh, uh, s waves so it is called the cabrera sign okay and if there is notching in the up stroke in the r wave it is called chapman sign so these are pointers ki your patient had mi previously okay so i think i have taken much of the time uh, it is a huge topic and uh, thank you
Thank you, sir, uh, for such detailed and extensive coverage of uh, ECG and CAD. Trust me, everybody, all the whole of this talk is very important and uh, questions are keep getting repeated on uh, ECG and uh, it may seem very difficult to remember all of it. Uh, but uh, once you get over the once you keep getting over the criteria and you relate to the anatomy and the orientation of the leads, it gets easier. Again, thank you. It was a masterful talk. Excellent talk. OK, uh, really, it was meant to be a you know really a very good talk for even DNB or DM cardiology students. Uh, some, uh, some questions which have been asked uh, in your exams, CCT exams, which is already covered uh, in a very nice way. You have been asked about the types of LED, which he mentioned. Type 1, 2, T1 is not reaching the apex 2. He was talking about wrap around. Type 1, 2, 3 are asked. Uh, he spoke about hexaxial. That is, you have to draw the hexaxial. You will know V1 to V6, R, L, F, that one. He spoke about valence. Valence has been asked. Uh, he spoke about ACG, uh, ACS, ECG, in, uh, like in butter branch blocks. That is asked for five markers because these are all the questions which are there in the pool of CCT. We have a pool from which we set the questions. In any case, all this will be asked to you. He's uh, covered all of it extensively. Uh, another thing is they will ask about collaterals. They might ask you about collaterals in your practicals because if you have a 2-3-F ST elevation, it could be because RCA was being supplied by LED, but now the LED gets infected and then you can get an anterior and inferior. So you can get that, which is again covered. And of course, posterior wall is covered.